بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن ولا رب يسر وأعن يا كريم وافتح بالحق إنك الفتاح العليم I was having a go earlier today at this idea of ta'allum, the acquisition of knowledge, education, as not being categorically different to any other form of taqarrub or approach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, it's min jumlatil ibadat. It's one of the forms of worship. Ibadah is in fact rather a lousy translation for worship or vice versa, if you like. It's a different kind of concept because it's related, as we know, to the root abd, <coughs> the Adamic human being. It's in the state of obodiyya, slavehood. This is the position of sajda. This is the maqam of the prophets. Sayyidina Isa, despite all that was said about him and about his exalted status, first thing he says when coming into the dunya is inni abdullah I am Allah's slave atani al kitaba he gave me the book in other words he taught me so the station of obudiyah and the station of, of ta'allum are not separable you cannot be an abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at some level Allah says, إنما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء Allah is only feared by the ulama, the learned amongst his ibad, his slaves. True khashya, which is a form of taqwa, true fear is only possible when we know exactly what we are fearing, who we are fearing, and how to fear him. So, one way, as we saw this morning, of making our ta'allum a form of ibadah is to acquire the prophetic ability of naming with the names. Giving to the phenomena of created existence those names and those meanings which have been truly attributed to them by the Creator. And these names are from tawqif, they are divinely bestowed. They are not from wada or human invention. And we have an entire very sophisticated branch of the Islamic sciences called fiqh al lugha which goes into the metaphysical significations of the process of naming. If you look at the first section of Imam Ghazali's book, Al Maqsad al Asna, fi sharh ma'ani asma ila al husna, which has been done into English once or twice, you'll see exactly how important and uh, sophisticated this, this science is. So, as we learn, we become Adamic. We acquire or we reacquire Sayyidina Adam's knowledge of the world. And this also must mean that there is a knowledge that is true, the Adamic knowledge, and there is also a bogus knowledge. The names which were taught to Sayyidina Adam السلام, in that great cosmic event, which is the precedent for all Islamic learning, were correct names. They indicate what is the case with regard to each of the events which they signify. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his creature the true name of everything. Human beings, Adam on their own authority, on our own authority, cannot know the true names of the phenomena of created existence. As we saw earlier, we as creatures cannot reach outside the realm of creation. The Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala has to intervene if we are to have that sort of knowledge. So these names, which are the basis of all processes of education, have to come from outside. So we human beings just have to invent names when we need a name for something, if we don't have a revealed name. And to invent a name is, in a sense, to set up an idol be one definition of idolatry. Allah says, in here illa asma' 
they are but names. Sammaytumuha antum wa abaukum ma anzalallahu biha min sultan. They are but names which you and your forefathers have invented, concocted. Allah has sent down no authority regarding them. This is to do with the idols, the asnam of the pagan Quraysh, but in this deep Islamic understanding we could say that it relates to any attempt by human beings to attribute a name on human authority to any phenomenon of existence. The name has to come from the divine authorization. Why should this be? Well, to name a thing is implicitly to declare a belief about its source. When we use an Islamic name for a phenomenon, one which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has himself used and sanctioned in scripture, we are acknowledging that phenomenon's absolute dependence upon him. He is Al-Qahar, the compeller. This is one of his names. Everything in existence is determined at all moments by his relation to it. That's the only real relation. When we make up a name, we are attributing that phenomenon to ourselves, and hence we are usurping a divine prerogative. Hence we could define the difference between Islamic education and modern secular education as the difference between a system that recognizes Tawheed in the most profound sense, uh, Tawheed as the reduction of all manifest apparent being to its divine metaphysical source in his knowledge. On the one hand, Islamic education, which is the reduction of everything to the one principle. And on the other hand, a system that denies Tawheed, that as we saw is preoccupied with the signposts, neglects where they are all pointing. A system that neglects or even negates the wisdom that all phenomena are from one transcendent source. In other words, it is a system of shirk. So these two surviving systems of education in our world represent two polar opposites. The prophetic reduction of all things to the one and the demonic uh, diversification of phenomena and the absolutizing of the infinite. In other words, infinite possibility, infinite forms. The idea that the, the universe is not bounded. In other words, infinity absoluteness, which was by all traditional civilizations taken to be an attribute of the source, of Allah, has now been taken away from the source and has been applied to the world of forms. So the world itself becomes the absolute. And the absolute, with a capital A, is no longer acknowledged. So this is the gulf that separates our model of education from the only significant alternative. Now, it's a large judgment, but Islam, I think, has to be insistent here. We are dealing with alternatives of Tawheed and Shirk. The basis of our system of education is Tawheed. The basis of their system of education is fundamentally uh, an assumption of Shirk. To affirm a plurality of causes in the cosmos is Shirk. An idol doesn't have to be thought of as a conscious being in order to be an idol. Sin really of modern educationalists and of the Western approach to knowledge generally is again as we saw the sin of shaitan, of Iblis who refused to bow down to Adam. I'm better than him, he said, you've created me of fire. You created him of clay. Introduction of a plurality of, of axiologies, of, of, of scales of judgment. That is shirk. And that's the nature of modern education.